Hi. How are you, Mama? I'm good. How are you? Good. I'm glad that we're back at it. Me too. Episode two. Yeah, we got we got some good responses for episode one. Of insight. Insight. One sight one. Insight. One, yeah. one sight. Yeah. The biggest response was I said to everybody that we should have called it son of a bitch. Yeah, I really did like that too. <laughs> I thought that was pretty good and it does, I guess just saying it, <laughs> at least we know people will know our sense of humor a little better, but <laughs> that that would be... That, yeah. ooh, that would definitely describe it perfectly, but Insight, I think, has been doing good. Mm -hmm. And on this second episode, I guess we're going to dive into just the Facebook thing a little bit more mm -hmm. specifically, yeah. um, kind of maybe social media in general, but I, I would like to stick with the Facebook thing. Sure. Um, so to give you guys a background for my social media, I have not had a personal Facebook, and I think seven-ish years and I was on and off um, before that too. Uh, I do have an Instagram for my business and uh, I would say I like Instagram the best out of all of them yeah. but uh, I'm very kind of leery and I have my reasons for not being on Facebook so that's my social media status. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah yeah well uh, and and my social media status is, is completely and totally the opposite just because uh, you know our business depends upon it. Mm -hmm with those social media platforms. Myself, personally, I'm not as active and uh, we'll, we'll kind of get into that uh, a little bit. Um, but uh, what I kind of wanted to touch on is um, we got several questions last week from people who were watching um, about wanting to expand on Cambridge Analytica's role and also expand on kind of the BBC interview um, in general, uh, just, just as far as how Facebook did play, you know, the role in uh, in having Trump, you know, win the election. Um, so, in regard to Cambridge Analytica, um, again, I can't stress enough that uh, the psychographics and kind of the boogeyman aspect of it, we didn't really use much. And Cambridge Analytica, um, they weren't necessarily hired on the campaign. What happened was the guy who managed Cambridge, Cambridge Analytica was managing another campaign. Um, and Brad Parscale was very impressed with this, with mm. this individual and wanted him to come on board. And he just so happened to, uh, he just so happened to have gotten a job with Cambridge. And so this gentleman was like, you know, I think that you might be able to benefit off of Cambridge Analytica and what they have to offer. And so that's when Cambridge was brought on. And again, like I said, you know, it was a very, very small group and it was really more along the lines of, um, you know, where Trump was pulling high, where he wasn't, that kind of thing, right? So mm -hmm. Cambridge Analytica has gotten a really, really bad name for a lot of things that they did. Um, Deservingly so. Yeah, I uh, wouldn't say that you ever come off as like defending any of this. I mean, the information is just being presented. I still have a lot of the questions and I'd love to get into that sure. because I was just thinking I'm still fascinated by it and it's been, you know, a few years now and I was, I'm close to the resource. I can ask the questions. I've asked questions, but the longer you're removed from a situation, I think you can kind of take a breath and recount the details a little bit better. And uh, yeah, I mean, that would be great if we could go over some of that too, because I, I mean, I'm just as curious as yeah. you guys are about well, that. And I think that, you know, one of the first questions um, that, that should be asked and, and, and haven't been asked um, was the relationship or is the relationship that Cambridge Analytica and Facebook had um, several years prior to the 2016 presidential uh, campaign. Um, and that was that Cambridge Analytica, way back in 2012, um, they breached information using, you know, some, like Facebook apps. Um, in fact, it was called, um, this is your digital life. And so anybody who opted into that, they knew, okay, they, maybe they didn't, but they were kind of giving permission to where, you know, yeah, Cambridge Analytica and Facebook could access this data. But basically what happened was it was accessing friends and family of, 
the people that you know had that app as well. So all in all, and I wrote this down, um, yeah, 87 million people, <laughs> yeah, basically kind of had their their data at, in in some so at some point breached, yeah. right? But this was you know this was like 2012, okay? So 2012, this all happened. Cambridge Analytica, Facebook, they had this relationship. And then in 2014, Facebook, uh, Facebook began an experiment called the Social Contagion Experiment. And basically what that was is over um, a, a period of time, they wanted to find out whether or not they could manipulate emotions of Facebook users, whether they could make them sad, depressed, happy, you know, just by posts just by you know suppressing or uh, releasing you know um, different posts mm. uh, and and with this with Facebook you know Cambridge Analytica they've always been more politically focused and data driven and stuff like that and Facebook uh, what's super interesting about it is that you know they try to be like oh we're you know we connect people and we're all about unicorns and love and you know just yay that seems to always be the theme yeah, for yeah, anybody that yeah, wants your data yeah and, well and you know basically what they were doing is they were they were doing kind of the same thing that cambridge was doing but from an advertising perspective and so they were taking that data so that they could present it to potential advertisers saying hey you know what women like between you know the hours of 8 p.m. and 10 p.m. on Thursdays, for some reason, are like super, like they're more depressed than usual. And so you may want to like feed them, you know, ads about like beauty that make them feel like kind of like they need this or, you know, just just stuff like just that. Like, yeah. How perfectly they could yeah. fit that. That's exactly we'll right. see. And I would say as somebody who is just more of a, a hobbyist, you know, study of psychology, things like that. There's always been the the idea that different colors and different brands evoke different emotions right. and different brands want to use different, you know, fonts mm -hmm. and styles and color mm -hmm. swatches to get their targeted customers. Mm -hmm. And so just that being known, I would definitely I would be skeptical. I mean, you could still proceed with the experiment if you wanted to see how well you could market to people under the basis of we really want to give the people what they need or what they think. You know, I still think it's BS, but I'm trying to. No, I to know play you're trying to. Yeah, you're bit, trying. You're trying to see. You're trying to see both see the sides. Good of the a little spectrum. bit in That's it exactly too. Right. Yeah, and if it were if it were up to me, if somebody yeah. said, "Hey, Chris, you know, you're at Facebook, and we want to make this social experiment," what I'm saying is that just with my rudimentary, you know, little bit of self taught reading of psychology that I've you know done I would be leery and I would say we need to be very careful with how we play this out because you know the best way for a person to decide on what they need is to really decide on their own in their own time with no influence usually and uh, to say that you know you're going to predict what they need is really to say that you're going to feed them what you think they want to be fed well, and they might not know the difference not and, even not even that no they'll they'll feed you definitely based on the interests of the data that they've collected. So yeah, I mean, to, to an extent, you know, I, I, I see your point, but on the other end, and we had touched on this last week, you know, when you are telling them that you are in a relationship or you're going to be, you mm -hmm. know, you've, you've, you've gotten engaged or um, for example, you know, your, your religious affiliation or you're checking into, you know, you like Italian food and you're checking into an Italian food restaurant, that kind of thing. They already have they, they have that data. So really they are, you know, in theory, they are serving you things that they think that, you know, mm -hmm. you need based on your profile, on your, you know, just just based on your likes and stuff. Um, but going back to, you know, the BBC interview and Jamie Bartlett and all that kind of thing, I I, I really I've challenged him several times asking him to, you know, just release the interview in its entirety yeah, I'd like to see that. without you know without it being edited um, because mm. you know there were several times that I was presenting the same kind of you know conundrum that his whole ending was based on um, in fact I mean he it was almost verbatim of what I said throughout the interview which was basically that Facebook 
you know, was in this dilemma, is in this dilemma, you can't, you can't act like you are for the good of the people and you can't act like, oh, you mm -hmm. know, I'm going to connect, you know, we're going to connect these people and it, like I said, it's going to be all about love and friendship and everything. And then be able to, with a smile on your face, collect millions and millions and millions of dollars from advertisers and also, you know, the political campaigns. I mean, Facebook didn't want Trump to win, but boy, they sure didn't, they didn't, they didn't hesitate taking, you know, the millions of dollars. That's the impression that I got, is that it was more of a money-fueled um, thing than it was a politically-fueled thing. Mm -hmm. And to me, I would always, in my mind, you know, it might be stereotypical, but I would kind of just associate Facebook with more of a liberal thing as far as the people who were a part of it, maybe who they donate to, but I, I don't know, that's just me, you know, kind of spitballing, but I just want to say, I always was more under the impression, and to me from the start, it seemed very clear to me, when you told me how much Facebook was helping, for whatever reason, stereotype or not, I just went, what, really, to that level? And then when I heard how much mm -hmm. that camp was paying Facebook, not any more than the other camp could have paid them, right. it wasn't a bribe or anything, I'm just saying the amount of business they did with Facebook, to me, it just became very clear. I mean, yeah. it, it was obvious for me. Yeah. Well, and you know, and truthfully, I think that if if um, if the shoe would have been on the other foot, and if Hillary would have won, none of this would have come up. I agree with that too. None of this would have come up. We never would have had, you know, the Cambridge scandal, which I'm glad that did come up. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Facebook would have been viewed more, I believe, as as the hero of the day. Um, all of Hillary's digital team would have been just lauded as the most intelligent people of the 21st century. Um, it, it just, it, it, it still blows my mind how just, if the election would have gone the other way, I just don't think any of this would have, would have come out. Now, am I glad that it came out? Absolutely, I am. Yeah. You know, because people really do need to understand that, again, like I said last time, Facebook's not your friend, Google's not your friend. You know, any type of data driven, you know, platform. I mean, not everybody that's using that, you know, old people like Face App, you know, it's like, dude. You're freaking yeah. giving, you're giving a, away. A camera right on your desktop there <laughs> for everybody. You're giving away yeah. your, your, your facial, your, for facial recognition, for AI, stuff like that. It may sound tinfoil hat-ish and all that kind of stuff, but I think that 2016 and Cambridge Analytica and the social contagion experiment, which was even prior to that, it's proven that, you know, you, you, you have to be cognizant yeah. about the, you know, amount of things that you're sharing on these different platforms because it could be used yeah sure it could be could be well, used for you but it could be used against you too. i would say something as far as it you could even say you know leave it at it could be used for you could be used against you but what i would say is you almost as an individual tend to just use it against yourself Absolutely. without even knowing it oh my i goodness. think that if a lot of people looked in maybe if they kept a journal or a diary there's things that I've journaled that when I go back a year later, I'm so embarrassed of. But it's like you should say it to yourself. You should get it out because that embarrassment or that oopsie can be contained within your own realm, but you still get it out of your head. So it's like, you know, not stuck right. inside. So I get the need and I get the like, how convenient that all my friends can know at the same time. And you're not trying to text everybody right. at the same time or do that. I, I, I want to like stress that I do see the value. a value and I do see a potential value that maybe is not here right now, but it's like a tool. I can figure out how to use it for the good. But the thing is, is like the people behind the tool, you saying, you know, well, it could be for good. It could be for bad. I think that one, they kind of don't even know. Two, I think whatever they're going to do for money is going to dictate it more than good and bad will. Yeah. And then three, like I said, I think the individual has a tendency to use it negatively because most of the studies, it might just be because we want this, but I think there was a recent study done, might have been by Stanford, but it was one of the most complete studies as far as social media, Facebook in particular, when you remove it, when you take yeah. that <coughs> out of your me. life, yeah. people's quality of life, their political polarization, uh, they weren't as extreme to either side, 
Uh, they were a little bit more at peace. They were a little bit. It's like it, what I'm saying is, is all these studies that people are doing to see, oh, is it bad for you? The people who participate, not just in polls now, but this uh, this one study was a more legitimate study to find causality, which is what any scientific study should do. It's always looking for causality. A uh, poll or things of that nature are not scientific, but they're saying then basically that without this, you're a happy, a happier, more functional, more content, more fulfilled human being on average. So what I'm saying is, is that even when the studies are set up very independently, just looking for you know non-biased uh, results, it seems that the outcome is always, oh uh, well, I'm a little bit better off without it. And so to me. Uh, I think that's so powerful right now uh, is just far as it doesn't mean that social media is bad, but it does mean that the state of it right now and whoever's using this tool um, or the people behind the tool mm -hmm. are using it to manipulate you and not letting you use it as just an open tool. You know, that's what it should be. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, you make a good point, you know. Uh, yeah. I, I just wanted to say that <clears throat> we talk about how social media uh, works and like there's all this trickery to get your information but this has been going on for a long time mm -hmm. if you look back we always talk about publishers clearinghouse they gave away all that money not because they were philanthropic and they want they were getting your data sure. to build mailing lists right. in the 60s and 70s mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, so anytime somebody's giving you something that seems like an amazing tool for free you might want to take five minutes and read that EULA, read, read the terms and conditions, because oftentimes inside of that, just like you said with the old Face app, they're, they're giving you access to open up your camera. Right. You know, Alexa, Echo, all these other things. Mm -hmm. You're giving them access right. to listen to you, to take pictures of you, to take, and I'm not saying this as like a crazy conspiracy theorist or whatever, but just be aware that things that come to you that are free sometimes aren't as free oh, yeah, as you for think. For sure, for sure. And I don't think it's conspiracy theory at all. I mean, it's been proven. It's been absolutely proven. It's been proven with, you know, the data breach and all that kind of stuff. I mean, so, right. it, it, you know, I don't, I don't think that this has anything to do with, you know, being paranoid or, or you know, too well It's obviously hat worthwhile information like to go after. Right. Yeah. Absolutely it is. Absolutely it is. Yeah. And, uh, and, and I do think, too, you know, again, to your point, that, that it, it can be good. It really can be good. Mm -hmm. But just like everything, I just think that there are some you know, nefarious things on the other side as well. Um, and, and I would say the, the extent that I can speak on that is that I definitely have the more philosophical, the meta side where I'm looking at, you know, why can't people see that they might be being manipulated? Why can't they see that you could change your own narrative on Facebook and try to be, uh, you know, more positive, more loving, more connected, but it's just in life in general. So what I'm saying is I just have a very, I mean, all these questions about why don't people do this or this, mm -hmm. they could be applied to life as well. So they're not Facebook specific. So I just would say I'm more interested in what you have on that as far as what are they doing exactly? You know, obviously we've talked a little bit about they're that with the data. Completely and totally manipulating collective consciousness. Yeah. And what is... <laughs> <laughs> they're like how would they end up because I feel like when you're depriving the you know populace or the masses of something then it's not being deprived you know they're not being uh, deprived of it because the people on the top aren't using it so what I'm saying is that like collective consciousness is it that they have it like the Mark Zuckerbergs the the, the people that are behind the, the Bezos do they have do they know something are they doing something that we really just don't see that we're just like oh man we're just gonna you know i know it's even bad maybe i won't participate in it but i guess i feel that way but i'm saying like what what do i not even know that i'm missing well i mean again i mean i think it kind of goes back to the social contagion experiment it, it's just it's just how easy how easy it is to manipulate you know manipulate thoughts, manipulate feelings, manipulate emotions, you know, but it's just, I, and I think that, and this is, this is an advertising, you know, mechanism. I mean, you know, 
watched Don Draper's pitches on Mad Men. Mm -hmm. You know, it's been it's been happening for years. It's just that now, it's from from a digital perspective, it's a thousand times, in fact, probably a million times, like just more more powerful. Just because it's like before you had to open up a magazine and you know invest some time and read it, or you'd have to turn on a TV. Right. You know, not even, you know, I mean, shoot, before remote, you had to, like, turn the channel, that kind of thing. Now, all you do is you, you're just connected, and, and you're, you're just, and it's constant, and it's constant, and it's constant, and it's an addiction, and it's an addiction, and it's Absolutely, an addiction. Absolutely, yeah. And, yeah. and so I think that people like, you know, Zuck and Bezos and everything like that, they absolutely know that. And so they're able to, you know, play on that. And again, I'm not saying, you know, this is the thing, and this is what irritates me, too, about... Just the crap with, you know, Cambridge Analytica and Facebook and, oh, my God, how dare they? Yes, 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 how dare they? How fucking dare they? I, I yeah. get it. But there is no more personal accountability, you know, and, and I think that with that personal accountability, and again, goes back to what I'm saying about the collective consciousness and, you know, how Facebook and Twitter and everybody that's playing on this, you know, um, just nobody is taking responsibility for right. the the crap or whatever they're posting you know i mean i i just it blows my mind how many people just post that you know like oh i'm so depressed today you know yeah, I, the, I feel like you know i don't want to get out of bed today or blah blah blah, blah or this or that you know and, and i just think to myself wow man like collectively you know you just you have you have two sides of the camp, really, right. and, and one side's like, oh, for fuck's sake, man, I'm just, I can go outside, well, get some remember, sunshine, you know? This is interesting, and Nintendo then the other Wii, do you remember when we got the Nintendo Wii that first year, and it's the only game system that's ever said, hey, you've been playing for a while, why don't you <laughs> why don't go you take go a outside? break outside? I'm sure people called Nintendo and went, shut up, just shut up. Yeah, but that's so true. That would be super, super cool to do that. You know, hey, you know Facebook's what? Facebook's like, damn, you're feeling yeah. depressed. Hey, yeah. I got a suggestion right. for you. Right. Instead, it's not a. It's like, hey, you're feeling depressed. Let me, let me, let me, right. let me hit you with this ad instead of, hey, how about go outside and get some sunshine? They don't even sunshine. like notify your friends. Get like, some vitamin hey, D. You, know, you should talk to your yeah, friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so so you know, with that, like on the other end of the spectrum, then you have you know the people that are, oh, well, oh, I'm so, I'm depressed too. You know, like stuff like that. And so you just. So you just look at that and you're just like, wow, and, and now Facebook knows your information and now all this stuff and now you're going to start getting, now you're going to wonder why you're starting getting fucking like Prozac ads and shit like right. that. You know, and it's just, it's, it's, it's just crazy, you know, so, so there has to be some kind of, you know, personal accountability on that too. Definitely. You know, I mean, pick yourself up by the bootstraps, get happy. You know? Yeah, and you have to have self get worth. Happy. You yeah. have to have self worth. And I know, you know, I know, like it's a, oh, it's easier said than done. I get that. I totally get that. But you're not doing yourself any favors putting right. this stuff out. Not only from, like I said, that collective consciousness kind of, you know, uh, um, uh, aspect, because I really do believe that the higher we are all up as, you mm -hmm. know, a society, as a universe, uh, you know, the higher the vibrations are and the higher everybody is is working up and the love and all that kind of stuff together yeah that's some new age you know kind of well but it bullshit tends to but show, i'll tell though, you what yeah, yeah no no more and more life. science and, and more and more science is showing that you know it's showing that, you, that hey you know what those positive thoughts and vibrations and things they tend to raise up with everybody you yeah. know with that oh so. well when you study some of the most uh, you know famous and successful sports teams or you know really good political campaigns they all have that diversity of minds and they all kind of say the same thing and it's the positivity the mm -hmm. the diligent work but the the ability to just they all almost made that one vibration they all came together and so it does show that when people are in elevated states of that kind of consciousness and when they're brought together big and beautiful things right. are being done but i think what you're saying is that imagine if that wasn't grouped to just such small people or small amounts of people with such power right. you know it's like if the collective consciousness was truly being well, collected so you, you nailed know? it so you nailed it on the head see so what so what these people are doing what the zucks are doing and and you know Bezos dorsey's and, and yes yes and all these people what they're doing is they're playing on the lowest vibrations. 
Yeah. Because they want to keep that collective consciousness. That's what Kanye low. says about hip hop too. He says <laughs> that the hip hop. He's like, look, you guys are playing this low. You know that boom, yeah, boom, and then the tss, 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 like the real. Hot, he's like, all of that hits all of the bad chakras. He goes, he want you to feel like shit. And like, you know, everybody, yeah, Kanye is crazy. No. But like Kanye said, that's why he gets to go home every night because Kanye is crazy. But he's exactly <laughs> fucking right, yeah. though. Yeah. yeah. I mean, well, Teresa's is crazy, too. Right. But it goes, yeah, it, it goes into a, a lot of different, yeah. you know, yeah. spiritual so they do. type yeah. areas. Yeah. But so there they, is quantum physics yes, with they this. Keep, I agree. They keep it down because I will tell you what, when Facebook first came out in 2007, you know, and it got it started getting gaining popularity in 2008. And Dan and I have always been, you know, early adopters on on uh, on, on social media pl platforms and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. When it first came out, it was awesome. It mm -hmm. was unicorns and rainbows. It was motherfucker. I have not. I didn't even know whether you were alive or not. Yeah. Like I have not spoken with you since freaking high school graduation or like other end of the spectrum or even like, oh my gosh, long lost friend in kindergarten, you know, mm -hmm. it was awesome. You know, it was awesome. And you welcomed it and you were like, wow, that motherfucker, he, he, right. that pizza looks good that she's eating today for right, lunch. Right. And look at that bitch. Look at her working out, checking in at the gym. And yeah, I mean, seriously, it was cool. Like, yeah. it was like, wow, you know? And then it just gradually just went just downhill. And I, I think a lot of people, I think a lot of people do blame 2016 for that, you know, the, the election and everything like that. Um, which I think, you know, I mean, fair. It's I can see fair. that. I can see it being I can a see that. fool me once, shame on you moment. Fool me mm -hmm. twice, shame on me. I think that right now we're in the looking out for the fool me twice. Mm -hmm. So if anything, yeah, I think it's a good thing that... But what I was going to say is prior to that 20... See, now, now if, if the social contagion experiment had not happened and the Cambridge breach had not happened prior to 2016, I was just about ready to say... Mm -hmm. I would probably pin it on 2016 and go, ooh, man, it got kind of yeah, ugly. Four years and before. Like, there was this major divide and everything. But, but if Facebook was playing on people's emotions and really encouraging, you know, kind of depressive shit, you know, being like put out there and all that kind of stuff to see if they could, you know, kind of manipulate and change, then it happened prior to that. And yeah. so my point being is that once the advertising and things like that once once Facebook decided that they were going to be they didn't even decide they secretly decided and said to the public oh no we're still you know we're still for you but when they decided that they were going to be a multi-billion dollar company mm -hmm. I think that's when everything changed and that's yeah. when the collective consciousness I think kind of changed with everything and it was just like that lower vibration yeah you know and and so that's what I find just so fascinating now yeah. is that when I hate getting on Facebook now because everything is just mean spirited. And again, a lot of people would say, well, you work for, you know, you worked for a very mean spirited mm. person and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I did. Yeah, it's a very you know, I mean, immature lie. He did, though. he did, but you know, but he did what he needed to do and he resonated with the people that he needed to resonate with. So I'm not, you know, I, I that, that's a whole different, and we'll talk about that, you know, in a later topic too. But, um, you know, you get on it now, and uh, like I, I can't bear it. Like I will look yeah. at it, and I, and even you know, even the 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 peace love you know stuff that I follow, like you mm -hmm. know, the the consciousness type, you know, uh, uh, people, the Greg Braden's, like stuff like that. They're all arguing, and I'm thinking to myself, man, not not Greg Braden, but you know, people that are on his yeah, page and that kind of stuff. Yeah. And I just think to myself, man, like this isn't like. This isn't supposed to happen that way. Well, yeah, And going absolutely. back to your point, with the Zucks and all those people up there, they want it to happen that way because the more divisive we are, the lower the vibrations. The lower the vibrations, the angrier we are, and the angrier that we are, the easier we are to manipulate right. and fear monger and do everything else. Well, and else. that's a good point about the, even the peace and consciousness thing is that even people, they're just trying to find a group even in that sense. And somebody could be a pretty enlightened person, but then their followers just want what that person got for themselves. And even if that person is, you know, kind of a good guru or what I've read mostly in like Buddhist culture is that every time somebody goes to a monk and asks them something, the monk sees that they're trying to get the answer that they want from them. 
so they can feel good. So what the monk does is sees right through it, mm -hmm. and they always give them some answer that they know that that person just didn't want. It's like the, mm -hmm. the furthest thing away from what they wanted to hear. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what I think is interesting about it is that a lot of people, including myself, I've found way more uh, moments of enlightenment and breakthroughs by other people or my, my situations in life. They didn't go the way I wanted them to, thought they would. You're not going to find things. it here. Yeah, and so those people are searching for other people. What I'm saying is they want to go to the Buddha and say, right. let me be you. And well, the let's... Buddha just kind of laughs and goes like, well, I can you know, maybe help you know, mess with your mind a little bit. Or but... the group. Just like we were talking about last right. week, you know, with the tribalism and all that kind of stuff, it's just they're you know, right. But think about okay, they're I'm not looking bring, within themselves right, first. They don't know who they are. Right, and I see. But here's here's where I get like this is where I feel like it's my gotcha moment to everybody. So these don't have to be big spiritual revelations. I know I speak of it through more of the like Buddhist teachings and the koans and things have taught me a lot of cool things about the way the mind works. But what I'm saying is. Let's do a super layman's example. It's always sunny in Philadelphia. <laughs> Frank, which everyone loves Frank because he's rich, but he's skeptical of everybody who has money and you know, he knows the game and he, you know, he knows that yeah. the the you know, one of the episodes, I think it's the gun fever one. Mm -hmm. He gets everyone hyped up because he has a stake in Gunther's guns, and so everyone gets hyped, hyped up and up buys a bunch it. of guns. Right. And then the next thing he goes on to is the water filter thing. And what he says to the gang at the end, uh, because they're still playing the gun thing, and by the end of it, like Dennis and Dee have flipped sides with Charlie and Mac, like they both had like been on opposite sides, and they end up on opposite sides. Yeah. And uh, Frank just says at the end with the water filtration thing, he's just like, you know, there's dupers and there's dupees. I'm a duper, you are dupees. Mm -hmm. And what's so funny about it is, is it's so layman. I mean, it's so like to a person like me, I can just watch it and we all laugh and just be like, yeah, you want to be like Frank. You want to you wanna be one step ahead of the schemers. Mm -hmm. And at the very least, not to scheme other people, but to not be schemed. But what I'm saying is, is that's what makes Frank such a unique and like that's his essence is that that is a hard thing to attain. And he has a bit of his own enlightenment because he knows how to play the game. He's got a bunch of money, but he also knows how not to get screwed and knows how he would manipulate people. Mm -hmm. Like when he's painting, you know, that he's getting Mac to paint the chair gold and Mac's like, how, you know, why am I doing this? He's like, because I'm manipulating you. Mm -hmm. And Mac says, well, I want to know how to do that. And he goes, well, finish painting the chair and I'll tell you. I'll tell you. <laughs> you know, so mm -hmm. I'm just saying there's these like layman examples. It doesn't mm -hmm. have to be a Buddhist, Buddhist, spiritual or any kind of philosophy. I just want to see people see these signs and just go, oh, I'll be more like Frank. Or I'll just kind of see that, you know, it's not as complex as we think it is. Because right. when you do give into it in that level of, oh, I'm just so hopeless, then, I mean, to me, even if you are, then you, you're just guaranteeing that you are. And then you're hopeless to yourself. So. Well, and then again, you know, going back into the, the, the social media with the Facebook and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff, that's what makes it, that's what, again, I'm total with, you know, personal accountability and all that kind of stuff, but that's what makes it so dangerous. And they know it because right. that's exactly what it is. And that's where they play. That's where they play on your, you know, your fears and your, you know, just your insecurities and all that kind of stuff. Definitely. And that's why. And, you, and then you keep low. You keep those frequencies low because, man, you know what? When you're fearful and when you're angry and, you know, when, when you are full of consumerism mm -hmm. and, and, you know, when you think you need things, you're so much easier. It's like so much easier to manipulate, you know? Yeah. And so, so that's where I think the danger is with all of the social media stuff, you know, where it lies now. And I think that... Um, it's going to be super interesting to see in 2020, you know, with the election, yeah. how they're going to use that, um, you know, to their advantage and, and, and what's happening, you know, because all I'm seeing right now on all sides is fear. Mm -hmm. I have not seen anything, any, not one iota of positivity, not mm -hmm. one positive story. Everything is fear. Yeah. Fear and anger. And it's just like, wow. This is, is, you know, this is crazy. I, I can't, I just, I can't, I, 
I can't well, grasp it. Yeah, and I mean, this is a good time to bring that up. We'll touch on it. You know, Castro making the list of people in San Antonio that donated the maximum amount to Trump's campaign, you know, using public information, but then compiling a list and then putting it on a social media platform that people give Trump a lot of credit for his power on. They say, oh, you go on here and you, you say these harebrained things and, you know, you, you fly off the handle and you tweet these things. And it's like, well, if you vote, for somebody like Castro, then, then I'm asking you, what's the difference other than you might be hearing what you want to hear? And man, I'm always really skeptical when I, when I do really hear what I want to hear. Because sometimes, you know, you just don't realize you're only trying oh, to get yeah. what you want to make yourself feel oh, good. Oh, my goodness. And that's a shallow mission. Oh, it's a total shallow mission. That's not and that's for the something, good of the people. Oh, no, and that's something that I struggle with every damn day. Because seriously, you know, working for Trump, and I, and I don't work for him anymore, but working for Trump and all that kind of stuff, you do, you find yourself getting super defensive. Like, mm -hmm. he's like, you know, he's like, your, he's like your uncle. You know what I mean? Like, you're like, yeah. hey, you can't, you can't talk bad. Like, can't talk bad about my uncle like well, that. Well, and to that point, you Joe know? Biden. Like, so, why not bring up Joe right, Biden as yeah. the guy who's like groping everybody? They all try to play that. It's like he's just the weird uncle. But that but, like, but yeah, but see, but but to your point though, you're absolutely ways. right. It's 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 lower. It's shallow. It's this. It's that. And that's why I'm you yeah. know I'm not trying. You know I'm doing. That, that's why I wanted to do this podcast with you in the first place, so that yeah. we could start talking about all of this stuff without it. We want to affect S energy, though, too, and not be taken on by other people yeah. that are throwing their and bad energy And you certainly don't out. want to be negative about any of it either, you Positive know? Positive energy so, to yeah, affect yeah. other so, people. So yeah. that's, what, that's what, to your point about Castro, that shocked me. Because, you know, they, they had this whole campaign with, you know, Michelle Obama, you know, when they go low, we go high, you know? Well, yeah, and, exactly. And, and like, oh, you know, I mean, love, Trump's hate, you know, stuff like that, right? And and so so I get that it's public information. I get that mm -hmm. any Joe Blow on the street could do it. I get it. I get it. I get it. But Castro's reasoning, and especially here in San Antonio, calling out some of these people, some of these people that employ thousands, yeah, exactly. thousands mm. of San Antonians, and I guarantee you a large, large percentage being Hispanic. It just blew my mind. Right. It blew my mind. Seems like, yeah. And it blows my mind, too, that out of all of the people, Castro, you know, Joaquin and Julian, as privy as they are with this, right. that they can't grasp that a lot of this is a game. In fact, the majority of it is. And so they may have given to Trump, but they also gave to their campaign, too. Right. Or, you know, I mean, I just... Well, the worst part is, too, is it, then they just lowered themselves to playing the game that Trump yeah, is so, playing. And, yeah, yeah. And it just, it was super, super interesting. I came up, though, <laughs> but I, it actually brought an interesting thought, and this may or may not be kind of a, a good point, but in my head, you know, it it definitely gave me a little bit more of a, of a full view of, like, the Electoral College thing, because when we talked last time, yeah. you know, okay, so let's say Hillary... Uh, you know, she was, and let's say this, that the popular vote went to her and then the Electoral College went to Trump. What I started to think about was that all those people on that list that Castro put out, um, most of them, like you said, employed a lot of San Antonio. I would be, I'd love to see the population of people that live in San Antonio that are employed by somebody on that list. Yeah. So if we took that percentage, though, here's what I'm saying. The people that work at Bill Miller's, the people that work for uh, these other people that were on there, Maybe a lot of them were the people that made up that popular vote that Hillary should be uh, president. Maybe a lot of the people who worked for those companies maybe voted for Hillary. But what's so interesting is that maybe it's almost like the Electoral College sees certain things and goes, well, the whole city of San Antonio that all of these people get to live in and be a part of and benefit from is almost created by all of these people. And they all support Trump. So if they all supported somebody, it's kind of like saying, so what did all the most successful people in the town do? Oh, they gave all their money to Trump. And then what did all the people do that worked for those people? Not to put those people down. I don't own a business or anything. I'm just saying, when you really just say, you don't have to feel any type of way about it. I'm just laying out objective truths that, that could okay. just be a situation that was true. So what agree. I'm saying is, is yeah. that if anything, I see certain things where I just go, not that our system is perfect or not that it's completely broken. I just see things and go, Oh, that's interesting how our system kind of like allows for that to be 
thrown no, around in it. It is. And to me, I'm really grateful for that because, like, I mean, I just, I, I see things getting done based off of a lot of the ridicul ridiculousness that we're participating in now. And there's a lot of places where their holy wars or whatever they're doing, their ridiculousness has been going on for 500 years, and it's at the same level. Mm -hmm. There's no, like, advancement in the ridiculousness. So I guess what I'm saying is I'm still at least somewhat optimistic that our ridiculousness now is going to go somewhere, and we're going we're gonna to be better people I hope so. out of this. Because I think that you really brought up the best point of the whole thing, other than just some of the egregious behavior of these people at the top, is that... Look at the egregious behavior of the people who are playing their game and just don't play the damn game. Mm -hmm. And that's a big, that's a big kick in the balls to anybody. I know that we don't feel powerful, but I'm more of a vote with a, my dollar type of person. And there's plenty of places that I've not purchased another item from ever again, just because of what they mm -hmm. decided to project. And that's well, something that that's is my what... choice, but I feel like that's harder to do than to just say, I'll vote every four years. But that's what, but that's what Castro wanted to do, and that was that was his point. Castro yeah. wanted to do that. Castro wanted to, you know, just yeah, good show luck getting people to stop show eating people at Bill Miller's to, in San Antonio. Well, yeah, though. and you know, and that true, that too. Like you're you gonna know, get but, all the San Antonians but, against but, the. But it's you just know what? Such a rotten, but you know what though? It's not San Antonio. But it's the, well, it's not San Antonio, but it is. It, it's it's, it's Castro's, game, but it's Castro's prerogative, and it's everybody's prerogative to be able to have that choice. And mm -hmm. you know what that choice is? A choice is called capitalism. Yeah. So, you know, everybody that's voting now with their dollars, it's a capitalist thing, right? So it just, it, you know, I mean, it, yeah, it, it, the whole thing is just, the whole thing has me just both in freaking like awe and, and laughing hysterically at times because I'm just like, wow, man, we just, we are at a crux of like, we, yeah. We don't know what we are right now. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> we just don't know what we are. But we don't know who, you know, what we stand for. We don't, right. and I just mean, you know, kind of collectively. And right now it is completely and totally divided down the middle, you know. So, so it's going to be interesting, you know, to see where it goes and I think so too. Back to, and I think you know, we're just, we're playing a little fast and loose just in general as a society right now, but that doesn't. That doesn't put me off. Like I said, I think that sometimes you got to ride a little fast and loose and get a little crazy to see sometimes where... Sometimes you got to break shit. Yeah, exactly. In yeah. order to see where the pieces fall and how those pieces that's, get put back together. That's Jordan Peterson's thing. I think one of his like 12 rules for life was one of them was the, if you see kids skateboarding, let them skateboard. That was a great chapter though because he basically was saying that they're, they're finding the line of fast and loose and dangerous. Right. And when they fall... They get a little better, and it doesn't necessarily make them more leery or scared off of skateboarding, mm -hmm. but they've wrestled with that line a little bit more mm -hmm. intimately. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to the next time they're doing a trick or they see different you know, obstacles, skateboarders are really interesting about that because they kind of know which tricks they're going to try down a rail. They see how the... How the trick kind of speaks to them like i think i can do you know this back lip on this rail because mm -hmm. it's just meant for it or i i have this trick down but for them to get to that level of like even that intuition of like i think i can do this they've had to wrestle through that like can i do this right. and that danger line and when you get to play that fast and loose game it, it's easy to see where you're totally. like oh i'm going to destroy myself or hey i can still have some fun in some freedom because that's what skateboarding's all about but not kill myself with my freedom. Totally, There's the balance. totally. There's a balance there, and, and, and we'll close on this, but you made a really good point. Those are all individual choices. Absolutely. So right now, and going back with Facebook and the groups and all that kind of stuff and everything like that, we need to all kind of step out of that and become individuals and be able yes. to take those chances and be able to really like evaluate who we are as individuals and what we are here to do mm -hmm. what we are here to do on this earth at this time to make it a better place you yeah know? and i know that people are going to look at this and go hey, you bitch you freaking you know help trump win you didn't make you know that kind of thing so i get it. i get it but what i'm saying is that i i am here because things needed to be broken Mm -hmm. I am here because, for some reason, 
I was a part of that process and now I'm going to be a part of that process putting it back together again, whatever that means. So, yeah. you know, but that's me. That's not me as a group. Mm -hmm. That's not me. To, that's me. And I've wrestled with this ever since, you know, freaking November 8th. 2016. Yeah. Well, and you know so, more than you did in 2016 now. You'll know more than you do now in 10 years. Yeah. And that's part of being an individual. So that's something that we should all embrace and just know that we are an ever-evolving consciousness. And yeah, I mean, that that really covers it. So yeah. it yeah. was it was a great um, a great conversation to, to finally really have. And, uh, you know, I just, uh, I think that you are awesome coming from somebody who's known you my whole life and someone that's close to her, I might be a little biased, but that's just my two cents on this is that I do know who you are and that you're just as capable of being a great human being <laughs> as the next person who has the opposite views as you. So let's just well, call that equality. Well, I appreciate that and I think you're awesome. And the next time, next week, we're going to get into you and your journey. So cool. Looking forward to it. Awesome. All, All right. right. Peace.